So today we are talking about the quality of the conversation. And as I said, I'm going to go through this part and then I'm going to jump into the live. So I see everybody waiting. So there's plenty of room. If you still want to hop on, uh, do not be shy. So, um, quality conversations and how to improve your basic, the quality of your conversation. So I'm going to start out with the first thing you need to understand. Every time you guys get on the phone and you're dealing with a seller, you have one goal in mind. You, you need to qualify and move your lead forward to either an appointment or an offer or both. Now, some of you are doing it virtual and you can adapt how I'm doing the speech, but for simplicity, this is going to relate to virtual and a local market. You have to have a goal. So if your goal is to move that lead along and find out where it is, and by the way, if you get a no from the lead, that means you moved the lead along and you qualified it. The worst thing you can do when working with a lead is get off the phone and not make any type of progress, okay? Every time you touch a lead, it's got to be in the process of pushing it forward. If you don't, your sales funnel will get completely full and you're going to get stuck, okay? Not everyone's a good fit for wholesaling. Let me repeat it. Not everyone's a good fit. So you need to understand and push leads forward, okay? So we got a lot we got to do on these phone conversations, but you have to understand the goal, okay? The move forward towards an appointment and offer, okay? So that doesn't mean you can just race through leads and just go through a quick checklist because if you're monotonous and you don't build rapport and you don't connect with people, you're never going to get to the appointment or the offer phase. So keep that in mind. The goal is literal, but you have to use techniques to get it, okay? Here's the number one issue. So you guys know that's the goal. The second one is you have to first and foremost identify motivation. Without motivation, you are literally wasting your time, okay? If there's no motivation on a wholesale deal, you do not have a good lead. And you're probably going to way overpay for it and it's not going to work. So Rick, how, how do we sniff out motivation? It's real simple. You need to find people that need to sell their house as opposed to people that want to just sell their house. It's really important you understand that distinction. Once you understand that distinction, you can work with any lead because the minute they have no motivation and it's a nice, pretty house and they're talking to you like a realtor, you got to jolt them back and find out why you're even on the phone with this person. And if you get a hard note, that's okay too. Guys, the first thing you have to do on all conversations is identify their motivation. But before you do that, any of you that are dealing with inbound leads, this doesn't relate to the cold callers other than the return cold calls, is you have to answer your phones. Honestly, you guys, you're going to laugh about this. A lot of you are scared to death to answer your phone and it shows. And you have to, you have to answer your phone. The reality is if I got 10 letters or I got anything else and it's, uh, if I got 10 letters, I bet you 70% of the calls would go to voicemail. Now, if that's crazy, I'm telling you, test it out. I test it all the time. People just don't answer their phones. Why? Number one, some people are just lazy. Number two, some are scared of it. Or some, uh, a guru taught them, let it go to voicemail to screen for uh, motivation. You can't screen for motivation through voicemail. It doesn't work. It's a very one-sided conversation. So for the love of God, answer your phones. I'm telling you, without answering your phones, this one right here, this could change your entire conversation. If you answer a phone live, you catch people by surprise. And they, the first thing I tell people when they would call me or they call any of my acquisitions people, I say, listen, I'm so glad you called. Do me a favor. Put all the letters you got down around you, any postcards. We're going to help you out. I don't want you calling anybody else. Okay. I'm going to block that seller and lock them in. And I'm going to do everything I can to captivate them. Okay. How do I do that? You have to answer the phones first. So really, really important. You guys think, I'm telling you, th like I have spent so much time with so many wholesalers. I'm like, what are you doing? It's just a lead. I'm, I'm, I'm training right now. There's no, no higher priority than answering your phones. You guys spend all this money, all this time, all this hustle and you don't want to answer your phone, you got to check that, man, because it's still a big problem. And I'm telling you, unless you're tied up with a full-time job and that's your only option, 
either get somebody to help you answer the phones. If you answer the phones live, your ability to close deals goes through the roof. Okay. Make it very personal and go from there. So we talked about identifying people's motivation. So how do, that's the first thing you need to do. So we need to get right into it. MCTP. You guys know exactly what that means. Okay. These, this is just an acronym um, for the points we look to touch on to qualify for the lead. So number one, M's for motivation. Okay. I don't say, Mr. Seller, what's your motivation for selling this property? I'm going to go into it. So tell me what's going on with, uh, tell me what's going on with you and maybe the house. I do an open-ended question to get into it. At that point, they usually roll into kind of what their motivation is. They don't usually lead with it. Now, if they don't give you that answer right off the bat, the other three will help you rip apart what type of motivation is going on. So the next one is C. Mr. Seller, tell me a little bit about the condition of the property. What's going on with it? And honestly, people either tell you how bad the house is or they're going to tell you how good the house is. Either way, it gets you closer to a qualification. If somebody walks through 10 minutes and tells me how perfect their house is, the white picket fence and the crown molding, I just shell shock them. And here's what I say. I go, uh, John, that sounds like a great house. Why would you even consider selling it? And I just shut up. And then usually right after it, they'll tell you why they're going to sell it. I'm selling this because I need to be closer to my mom to take care of her. She got a little bit elderly and that's the reason I need to sell it. Remember, they don't always tell you in the first stroke. Okay. So condition usually will tell you the condition of the house. Obviously the worst condition of the house increases your odds exponentially. Okay. The next one's going to be time frame. Okay. I've never met a seller yet that doesn't have a plan on where they're going to go when they sell the house. So ask them if I'm able to buy your house, what's your plan? Where, where are you moving to Rick? And either they're going to give you a detailed explanation right there. Hey, listen, I'm moving by the end of this month. No matter what happens, I'm going to live with my sister. Um, I got a moving truck coming on the 19th and I plan on being packed and gone and on the road by the 28th. Can you help me with that? Perfect. I suppose the other person goes, well, I haven't really thought about it. I haven't looked up a moving company and I have no idea where I'm going to live. That person is 90 to 180 days away from even considering selling their house or signing a contract. So knowing the time frame is probably the most critical part of identifying people's uh, motivation and it comes out in the qualifying questions. And then the last one is price. Now I give you a little disclaimer. Price alone is not a motivating factor. If it's just price, it's what we call MLS stuff, which is for realtors. And we don't do that every now and then you can snag one on price, but it's very, very rare. You're just going to buy on price because if it's price, the highest bidder wins. And we usually are the lowest bidder as I teach you. And that's not where you want, you don't want to be at the highest bidder. So when it comes to price, I never use the word price, ask, or offer. They are like the three poison words in real estate investing in relation to wholesale. So you say, Rick, how do I ask? It's real simple. Hey, Mr. Seller, what do you need to get rid of this property? I use very, very direct, um, what's the word? Verbs, uh, you, you know I didn't pay attention in English. You guys know my ADHD. So I'm gonna use words that just try to trigger like what they need to get rid of it. Because everybody has this conversation, they'll have it with their spouse, their family, I go, listen, um, we're going to ask 165 for the house, but um, if this investor comes by and he offers us like 130, I, I'm I'm just going to take it. So when I use words like "what's the listen, John, what's the least amount you take for the what what's what's going to get this property moved? What do you need to get? What do you need to get? It's probably the best go-to phrase I have. I have people that are better than me that work for me that are a lot better than I am. Zach's really good at it, but. You see the difference when you ask for a price or, you know, how much are you looking to get for it? You're usually going to a wish list. We're just going to the heart of it. What do you need to get? And a lot of times they'll go, well, what do you mean by that? I go, well, have you discussed it over the family? What, what is it that gets this deal done? And real direct. And then sometimes they'll go like this. I spoke it over with my wife and she said the lease wing takes 130, 135. Okay, perfect. We, so now you started... Um, the negotiation process. So MCTP guys, burn it in your brain. And the beauty of it, by learning the acronym, you don't have to have this complicated script 
because everybody has some sort of script. Don't get me wrong. We all got to start from somewhere and I'm fine with it. But I eventually want you to memorize the points of your script. So in the qualifying section, MCTP, now you can drop your script other than the acronym and you can put it like right next to your computer. You can put it on your phone. Heck, you can put it on your uh, screensaver. Don't put my mug on there because that's going to create a lot of questions. But once you do that, you can now turn your scripts into conversations. And this is where quality conversations destroy any type of VA that's just going to sit there and do a checklist. Listen, I love VAs, but for the most part, they're not really good at answering phones. They will take, they will follow the script to a T, but 95% of the time, if, and I get a lot of phone calls because I bought a lot of property and there's a piece of software out there, you know, scraping everybody's phone number. And it's really annoying because you got to keep switching phone numbers. That's another topic. But, um, I can tell when a VA is called every time. And some are good, but like you guys know when someone's going through a script from a foreign country, it's not hard to figure out. Don't be that person. Listen, if that's what you got to do, I'm fine with it. But most of you are starting out, you're answering your phones on your own. Have a high quality conversation, okay? Because let me ask you, would you rather do business with someone you personally know or a stranger off the street? Okay, yes, you are a stranger off the street. Just switch to being personal. How do you do that? You have to have a conversation, okay? Scripts get you nowhere. It's a checklist and you're never gonna win somebody over in a script. You ever been in a doctor's office and they rattle off all the questions? It, that's literally a script. You have to have a conversation. So how do we turn our scripts to conversations? Number one, start with the basic techniques we teach here. So guys, if you are new to this, I want you to go, uh, if you are new to wholesaling in general, go over to freewholesaling.com. As I said, it is the largest wholesaling course available in the world right now. And the really cool thing is it's 100% free. I teach all these techniques in there. I go into greater detail, I'm not holding back, but we only have so much time. I'm here for two hours. I want to give you as much value as possible. So I want you to jump into mirroring. Mirroring just basically means pretend you put a mirror up in front of someone and you try to mimic them. Now, don't mimic them to the point where you're trying to humiliate them. That's not going to work. But your tonality, your speed of your words and your conversation, um, the intensity you speak at, the pauses, um, facial features. Are they standing? I'm going to stand. Are they sitting? I'm going to sit. Are they outside? I'm going to be outside with them. Really critical stuff. It, it works like a charm. I'd like to tell you I came up with this. This is over 100 years old sales technique. Um, to me, it's kind of common sense. If you have a quiet talker, you got to talk quiet. If you have a slow talker, you got to slow it down really, really easy. And once you build all this stuff, you turn your script in the conversations by using these techniques. Confidence. This is what your sellers are truly looking for. But you're like, Rick, I've never done a deal before. How the heck am I going to get confidence? I go, well, I tell you what, at some point you never took a step before. And you took faith and moved forward with that step. And even though you fell a hundred times on your face, your parents never gave up on you. Why they gave up on you after 18, 19, that's another conversation. But it's, you have to get confidence. And the hardest, one of the most challenging things in wholesaling is people believe to get confidence, they got to get their first deal or two done. I'm here to tell you, if that was the rule, there would never be a wholesaler on the face of this earth. I've been through this. Zach's been through this. You've all been through this. So you have to have this thing, what we call faith, okay? And faith is believing in something, even though there's no, um, even though you're not sure, that you don't know that you can actually accomplish it. So if you have faith and you know other people have taken that journey and you follow the same journey, you can be pretty confident you can get there. And you have to take that leap, okay? Because if you're not confident with your sellers, you freak them out, Okay. So be confident about yourself, your personality. I don't want you to lie. I don't want you to go in areas you don't know. Wholesaling is the art of working with people and helping them solve their problems. Real estate is just a symptom of human life. And if you understand that, you can easily embrace and attack wholesaling because the valuation is just a number at the end of the day. What you're trying to go in is find a problem, try to ease the problem, and try to bring a solution to the problem that a traditional realtor probably could never bring to them. Okay. So, um, so we have confidence and 
Let me pop that up there. Uh, rapport. So we've gone from script to conversation. I've given you just a couple little bullet points. If you go to, to freewholesaling.com, I'll teach you how to do it deeper. And then we talk about rapport. The rapport is the ability to connect with someone. So if any of you are married, you got a boyfriend, girlfriend, you have kids, you have rapport. So you already have this skill built inside of you. You just got to pull it out. Rapport is the bridge to all great deals. Every great deal I've ever had, had rapport in it. Like you can't. So I've had motivation and I build rapport. You can't skip this process. So many people try to scale wholesaling and they'll hire VAs and they outsource it. And they just want to run through people. You can run through all the people you want. I'll sit there and build rapport and I'll make a ton of money. A lot of my deals come from wholesalers that have ran people over with VAs and they have terrible quality conversations. And they're just looking what we call that low hanging fruit. The person that just doesn't give a crap. And there are people out there like that, but honestly, it is a unicorn. They are not out there a lot and you will probably run out of money before you find them using that method. But who am I to say? I've only been doing this, what, I'm going on 21 years. I, I think I know what I'm saying when I do this. So guys, rapport. Rapport is everything. Rapport is what lets people put their guard down so you can have a real conversation with them, okay? Think about this. When you first call a seller, a seller calls you, Think of, it's like a boxing match. Everyone's holding their hands up waiting to go to blows. That's how your sellers feel. Like, oh crap, what's he coming out with me now? What are they trying to sell me? And your job is to open that wall up. You can't do it all in one shot, but you got to pick away at it. If you don't put that wall down, you are going to constantly be punched and the person's going to be in a defensive posture. So think about that friend you see when you go out to dinner, like, oh, hey, Rick, I haven't seen you in years. And like, it's like you didn't skip a beat. You have to like high five in each other. Everyone's having drinks, having a good time. You've got to get to that same feeling. You're not going to get it every time, but I'm just telling you, man, when you get it, it's unbelievable. And if you start doing that on the phone conversation, by the time you get to the appointment, it's so much easier. Okay. Guys, rapport is the bridge to all great deals. I rarely have one without it, okay? So guys, remember, on every phone conversation I have a seller, strive for an out outcome with each seller. So if the goal is to move and qualify them to find out if you're going to do an appointment or you're going to make an offer with them or you do both, whatever it is, you have to have an, a goal. So if I'm on the phone two hours calling people, I want to get something accomplished in two hours, okay? Sometimes you guys get in conversations and it's not going anywhere. So remind yourself, I don't care if you got to print something on your desk next to your phone, you have to have an outcome with each conversation. And sometimes the outcome is negative and that's okay because you can move them off your list and go on to the next motivated seller. Okay. There's nothing worse when a seller sits in the, maybe let me think about it zone. It's brutal. I call it the friend zone. You don't want to be there. It's not a fun place. We've all been there in high school. We're all like grown adults. And I'm sorry if you're in high school, you're listening to this. You, the quicker you learn this, you've got to get outcomes from people. People who put you on maybe, let me think about it. Those are the ones that will waste everyone's time. Do not let them waste your time. Either put them on the spot and move forward to get a decision. How do you do that? The more you build rapport, the better the conversation you have, you can get past that one. But I don't let it go by. I do not want to spend 45 minutes talking to someone to have them get back with me later. So I'm always going to qualify them and make sure everyone you talk to, if you feel like the conversation's not going anywhere, just go, Rick told me I had to have an outcome. I want a yes, I want a no, or like I want an appointment to verify some numbers. Um, I'm okay with no. Like people like, oh, you get upset with no. I'd rather have a no than a maybe. A maybe means um, I'm either lying to you, I'm buying time, I'm scared to death, and I don't know how to make this decision, which is very common in real estate. Remember, this is typically people's biggest asset, and they don't know how to tell you it's your job Figure yourself as a guide along the journey. If they need to sell the house, the house needs to be sold and they have a plan to get out of there. It's your job to structure an offer that entices them. That is a win-win, meaning it works for us and it works for them. If it just works for them, you'll be out of business in no time. And I tell all my sellers, if it's not a win-win, I'm not interested in doing it. So when they ask me for a million dollars for like a $300,000 house, I just like, well, how's that going to work? How could I possibly do that? How'd you come up with that price? So, um, and here's the last thing, and this is one that's often overlooked. S stop taking anything personally someone tells you on a phone, like just move on, okay? 
it it's just people will say weird things to you. Here's how I look at it. Everybody that contacts me or I even contact them, I have a chance. I have a shot. Okay. And if I have a shot, that's all I can ask for. I can't be mad at them, even if they're screaming obscenities to me. Sorry you feel that way. Is there a better time I can talk to you? Remember, we've all had bad days. That person just could have been caught at the wrong time and you can't take it personally. I'm telling you right now, I have personally been chewed out by sellers, like really bad stuff, only to have them call, Paul, uh, call me back and apologize three or four days later because I ended the conversation on a positive note and buy their house, okay? This is part of losing your ego in this business, okay? Stop trying to win the battle. Go for winning the war, okay? And there's no war here. If it's a win-win situation, it's like a peace treaty that's good for all. So when someone's really, really nasty to you, like you don't have to take it, but just end it politely. Listen, I'm sorry you feel that way. If, if anything changes, give me a call back and just leave it. You could have just called them at a really bad time. And remember, uh, when people are mad at you, and this, this works outside the phone, just because they're mad and upset, it's just it's, they're projecting something. It might have nothing to do with you. You just might have triggered them. So like, don't take it personally. So many guys are like, oh my God, I got chewed on the phone. Here's what I do. When I have acquisitions people and phone people, I train them for weeks on end and chew them out. So by the time they get chewed out, they're just laughing at it. If So it was a culture shock when I first started doing this. And I know some of you are on this live going, man, this is brutal on the phone. I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know, but it's the price we pay to get the financial freedom and get freedom of our time. And that's what you guys got to understand. And that's what I want you guys to know. So these are just a few tips here. Um, go over to freewholeselling.com. I got a whole section on how to answer your phones. I'll go into much deeper detail. And you guys got to use these tactics because so many wholesalers are trying this big scale thing. And I'm here to tell you, they have to increase their quantity so big and their budgets have to be huge because the only way you're going to make up with low quality conversations is you have to have high a uh, uh, large quantity of leads. So most of you don't want to spend 20, 30 grand a month on marketing. So the leads you do get and the, the sellers you engage just increase the quality of your conversations. So you got a choice, higher quality conversations, or you can up the qual quality of crappy leads. I choose to have the higher quality. It's less people, but I make plenty of money doing that. And it's like, I don't need 10,000 deals. The people trying to tell you to do 30, 40 deals a month, it's very hard to have quality conversations because that's going to take a lot of leads. So I kind of got my leads figured out. Every market's a little bit different. And my goal is to help you guys concentrate on quality conversations and stop this yo-yo where people are teaching you to do massive quantity leads and just have a staff rip through them because you are going to have to pump a serious amount of leads. So I can do 10 to 15% of what I call a big company does. And I'll actually make more money than that company. And uh, I enjoy like a super fantastic life.